Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. We're starting Chapter 3 today, beginning with Section 3.1 on Linear Inequalities. In this section, we will review the definitions of inequality signs, inequality properties 1 and 2. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the slope-intercept form of an inequality, but I do um, usually do these problems a little differently than they're uh, presented in the textbook. We'll talk about the graphs of x is greater than or equal to a or x is less than or equal to a. Uh, number six kind of goes with number four. I might do this a different way and we'll end with uh, graphing systems of linear inequalities. All right, so starting with review of our inequality signs, a is less than b means a lies to the left of b on the number line. A is less than or equal to B means either A equals B or A is less than B. A is greater than B means A lies to the right of B on the number line. And of course, A is greater than or equal to B means either A equals B or A is greater than B. All right, so really quickly, let's look at which of the following statements are true. And I will always remember my first grade teacher, the way that she explained this. Think of the uh, inequality sign as an alligator's mouth. And whenever I say this to a class, it seems like everybody had the same first grade teacher that I did. <laughs> I guess they all explain it the same way. So of course, one is less than four is true. Now, of course, in first grade, you don't learn about negative numbers. So uh, one way that um, to make this a little more meaningful is to think of the negative numbers as owing money. Uh, would you rather owe $1 or owe $4? Well, I would rather owe $1 if I have to owe any money. Uh, so that's the number that I would pick. So that statement is also true. Two is less than or equal to three is true because two is less than three. Zero is greater than negative two is true. You'd rather be even than owe two dollars. And three is greater than or equal to three is true because three equals three. So these statements are all true. <clears throat> all right, inequality property one, also known as the addition property of inequality, says, suppose that A is less than B, and C is any number, then A plus C is less than B plus C. In other words, the same number can be added or subtracted from both sides of the inequality. Uh, and we use this property to solve inequalities. Uh, note that this property also holds if less than is replaced with any other inequality symbol. All right, so for an easy uh, first example, let's solve the inequality x plus five is less than or equal to two. To do that, we will just subtract five from both sides of the inequality, which gives us x is less than or equal to three. So the set of numbers that make this inequality true are all numbers that are less than or equal to negative three. All right, inequality property two is a little more complicated. This is also called the multiplication property of inequality. If A is less than B and C is a positive number, then A times C is less than B times C. In other words, you can multiply both sides of an inequality by a positive number uh, without changing the inequality sign. However, uh, in property 2B, if A is less than B and C is negative, that means that A times C is greater than B times C. So if you multiply both sides by a negative number, or if you divide both sides by a negative number, then you have to reverse the inequality sign. And this property holds if less than is replaced with greater than, less than or equal, or greater than or equal. Of course, the uh, signs in part B have to be opposites of each other. So for example, if you replace uh, this symbol with a greater than or equal, this one here would be a less than or equal. 
All right, so let's solve the inequality. Negative 3x plus 1 is greater than 7. We'll start by subtracting 1 from both sides, which gives us negative 3x is greater than 6. Now we're going to divide both sides by negative 3. And because negative 3 is a negative number, that is going to reverse the inequality symbol. So the set of numbers that make this inequality true are those numbers that are less than negative 2. All right, now at this point, I may take a few liberties with uh, what it actually says on the screen. All right, so bear with me. I, I will probably do the examples my own way. Uh, a linear inequality of the form CX plus DY is less than or equal to E can be written in slope intercept form, uh, just like you can write a linear equation in slope intercept form. Um, and Okay, so continuing that statement, it can be written in slope intercept form if the number d is not equal to zero. In other words, if you actually have a y term, then you can put the inequality in slope intercept form. However, if you don't have a y term, uh, then you can write it in either the form x is less than or equal to a or x is greater than or equal to a. Okay, and this goes for any type of inequality sign. Okay, so in this example, we will find the standard forms of 5x minus 3y is less than 6, and also 4x is greater than or equal to negative 8. So in the first inequality, we're going to start by subtracting 5x from both sides. That's how you get from this step to this one. And then we're going to divide all three terms by negative 3. And again, because that number is negative, that's going to reverse the inequality sign. And it's going to leave us with y is greater than 5 thirds x minus 2. For letter B, all you have to do is divide both sides by 4. And because 4 is a positive number, you're going to leave this inequality sign alone. In standard form, this inequality is x is greater than or equal to negative two. All right, um, I am going to go very quickly through these next couple of slides because this is ge not generally how I'm going to graph the inequalities. I will say that um, the graph of x is greater than or equal to a or x is less than or equal to a is going to have as its boundary line and you'll see what I mean when we do an example, the vertical line x equals a, all right? And um, the graph of the inequality will consist of all points that are either to the left of or to the right of that line, including the line itself. Okay, now one thing this textbook does that's a little bit different, and I actually kind of like this, so I will do it this way. Um, when I used to teach intermediate algebra, we did not do it this way. We would shade the side that did make the inequality true. So that's very likely how you've been taught to do it before. There is a major advantage to doing it this way. So the way that I'm going to do it is uh, to cross out the portion of the plane that is not part of the solution, all right, which again may not be what you're used to. Okay, so let's graph the solution to 4x is greater than or equal to negative 12. We'll start by putting that in standard form. I think that's a fine way to do it for uh, this type of inequality. Dividing both sides by 4, you get x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so let me talk about this graph for a second. Um, I believe when I get to the next example, I'm going to switch over to the tablet, but I thought this was okay for these first few. So you're going to start by drawing the line x is equal to negative 3, which is a vertical line passing through the point negative 3, 0. Now, when it comes to figuring out whether to cross out the left side or the right side, I use what's called a test point. So the way that works is you pick some point that is not on this line. For example, the point 0, 0 is not on this line. 
All right, so let me uh, pull up a pen here so I can show you zero, zero. Okay, now when I go to plug the point zero, zero into this inequality, what I get is zero is greater than or equal, sorry, that's the best I can do with the keyboard, to negative three. And that is a true statement, meaning that the point zero, zero makes this inequality true. In other words, we wanna keep this whole side of the line X equals three, and we want to cross out the other side. So we're crossing out the part that is not uh, part of the solution, okay? All right, so I believe in the next example, I will actually switch over to the tablet. So that might be a little more clear. Um, I'm thinking that I might just skip this slide entirely because this is, yeah, I'm not gonna do it this way. Okay, so in this example, we will graph the inequality 4X minus 2Y is greater than or equal to 12. So let me switch over to the tablet. I have to tell you this story super quick. So I just got back from visiting my family in New Jersey. And as I was leaving, I forgot to pack my tablet. So my tablet got left in New Jersey. So I have to give a major shout out to my friend, Christine, who uh, lent me an extra tablet she, she had lying around so I could make these videos while I'm waiting for, <laughs> while I'm waiting for mine to be shipped from New Jersey. Uh, so Christine, this video is dedicated to you, all right? Okay, now, as I said, I do this a little differently. So instead of putting this inequality in standard form, I am going to find the X and Y intercepts of the line uh, 4X minus 2Y equals 12. Starting with the, let's say the X intercept. So remember to find X intercept, you uh, set y equal to zero. And that's going to give me 4x equals 12. So the minus 2y term just drops out. And then dividing both sides by four, you get x equals three. So that is the, the x-intercept. <clears throat> the y-intercept is where you set x equal to zero. Uh, in the original inequality. So that's gonna leave me with negative two y equals 12, dividing both sides by negative two, you get x equals negative six. All right, so let's draw a line uh, through those two points. And so here's three zero, and then I have to go all the way down here to get zero negative six. So the line looks something like this. Okay, now I have to decide which side I am going to shade. So let's go back here. Because the point zero, zero is not on this line, I will once again choose that as my test point. Once in a while, zero, zero is on the line and then you can't use it. You have to use some other point. So when I substitute zero, zero into uh, the original inequality, I get uh, zero is greater than or equal to 12, which is false, isn't it? So that means the side of the line uh, containing zero, zero is not part of the solution set. So that is the side of the line that I am going to cross out. So the solution of this uh, linear inequality is the part of uh, the plane that is sort of southeast of the line, uh, including the line itself. I am not going to, I think, talk too much about what these inequalities look like uh, when they have a less than or a greater than. Your textbook doesn't uh, emphasize those very much. Um, and there's a good reason for it, because when we get to word problems, uh, the inequality symbol will almost always be less than or equal or greater than or equal. Okay, so for now, I'll just say that because 
the inequality sign is either less than or equal or greater than or equal, that means the line is included in the solution set. All right, let's go back to the presentation. So you'll see here very briefly that they did this problem a little differently. Um, this, this way is okay. It's just that when we get into doing word problems, especially, it's, it's going to be difficult to do it this way. Uh, you're not going to want to graph these lines in slope intercept form. Um, there's a problem with it that I may talk about when we get there. Okay. Uh, so now in this example, we're going to graph a system of inequalities. So this is going to consist of all points that make all three of these inequalities true. So switching back to the tablet. All right, here we go. Now notice the second inequality is the one that we graphed in the previous example. So I went ahead and just uh, plotted that one. Okay, but we do have to do the other two. So this is one of those times where I encourage you to pause the video, try this, and, uh, and then come back and compare notes. So we're looking at 2x plus 3y First, we need the line, so I'm going to make that equals 15. The x-intercept is where y equals 0. That's going to give us 2x equals 15. Dividing both sides by 2, you get x equals 15 halves, which I'm going to think of as 7.5. And then the y-intercept. We'll set x equal to zero, and that's going to leave us with 3y equals 15. Dividing both sides by three, you get y equals five. All right, so why don't we go ahead and plot those two points? So uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. And then uh, y-intercept was y equals five, right? So one, two, three, four, five. Notice I'm color coding this, which I hope is helpful. Okay, so this line looks something like this. Okay, and now we need a test point so that we know which side to cross out. All right, so not to be too boring and predictable, but since zero, zero is not on my line, I will use that as my test point. When I substitute that point into the inequality, I get zero is greater than or equal to 15, which is once again false. So that means we're gonna cross out the side that includes zero, zero. So that would be this side. All right. So that leaves us with uh, y is greater than or equal to zero. Y equals zero is a horizontal line. In fact, it's just the x-axis. So that would be this line right here. Hopefully you can see that here. I'll make it a little darker. Okay, now I can't use my favorite point as the test point because zero, zero is on that line. Uh, so why don't we use zero, one? Oops. Okay. So when I put that into the inequality, I get one is greater than or equal to zero, which is true. So I am not going to cross out the side that includes zero one, I'm going to cross out the other side, which is this side down here. So the idea behind doing it this way with crossing out the sides that you don't want is that in the end, uh, the part that's never been crossed out is your solution set. 
So that would be this region over here. Just a couple of stars in there. All right, and that would be our solution set. All right, and I believe that is pretty much going to do it for this section. Okay, so they got the same answer. They did it a different way, and that's fine. All right, so if you would like to uh, do one of these problems for the discussion in this module, if you're in my class, uh, go for it. So to summarize, the direction of the inequality sign in an inequality is unchanged when a number is added to or subtracted from both sides of the inequality, or when both sides of the inequality are multiplied by the same positive number. The direction of the inequality sign is reversed when both sides of the inequality are multiplied by the same negative number. All right, the collection of points on, in the plane that satisfy the linear inequality ax plus by is less than or equal to c or ax plus by is greater than or equal to c consists of all points on and to one side of the graph of the corresponding linear equation. Um, I'm going to skip the part about putting it in standard form because I haven't been doing that, but the graph can easily be pictured by crossing out the half plane consisting of the points that do not satisfy the inequality. And finally, the feasible set of a system of linear inequalities, that is the collection of points that satisfy all the inequalities, is best obtained by crossing out the points not satisfied by each inequality. The feasible set associated to the system of the previous example is a three-sided unbounded region. As we said, it's this region over here. And that's gonna do it for section 3.1. We'll see you next time.